Remington Steele? He doesn't exist. I invented him. The woman behind the man, Miss Laura Holt. Until the day he walked in, with his blue eyes and mysterious past. Remington Steele is an elaborate ruse. He does not exist. We never mix business with pleasure. Well, almost never. I think it's time they found me. Remington Steele. Weeknights at 8, 7 central on MeTV. Hello, I'm John Mallows, and welcome to Connect With Me, live on the showroom floor on this Tuesday morning. Uh, Connect With Me, you're watching us live here on Comcast 187 and 43.6. Again, we're talking politics. Hey, the election is one week away. The focus today is the city of Sanger. We've got two men in the house, in the studio, who want to be mayor. We're going to be here with your phone calls at area code 559-265-4331. Of course, today we're focusing on the city of Sanger, and a lot of people who live in the city or even outside the city are saying, you know, to change what's going on in the city of Sanger, you've got to change the culture. You've got to change the mindset of the city council people and the mayor. In the last few years, you've had two grand jury reports, one in 2009, one earlier this year that dealt with Measure L. We'll get into that later in the program. The grand jury report in 2009 said the city leaders were putting the city at risk in terms of financially. You had a city manager who was making a lot of money, a police chief and a parks rec uh, person who was making a lot of money. $11 million completely disappeared. Where did it go? Way back when, in 2008 or 9, that the city had in a fund. And that grand jury report was very critical a couple of years ago. What's going on now at the city council in Sanger? Let's put up some of the members that are seated at City Hall in Sanger right now. We'll put them up one by one. First, we're going to talk about Council Member Martina Castellano. There he is. Next will be Joshua Mitchell. He is not only a City Council Member, but he is also the Mayor of Sanger. Then you've got Rodney Nielsen. And you have Eli Antaveros and rounded out by Victor Reese, who is also on the council. Victor is one of our guests today. But right now, you've got a division that continues on the council. You've got two members versus two other members and a person stuck in the middle on the fence. The culture, the mindset of what has happened in Sanger has to change according to some people. There is the cloud that follows Sanger all around. The cloud from the grand jury reports, we'll talk about that, and the unemployment rate. What are these two candidates running for mayor in the city of Sanger? What are they going to do to change the culture and the mindset? We'll talk to Victor Reese, Adrian Villarreal. They're live in our studio right now. Uh, left to right is Victor, and Adrian, his father, Jose, was once the mayor of Sanger. We're back with your phone calls as well. 265-4331. We're back in a moment. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool Cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. We are back here on Connect With Me talking about the city of Sanger today. It's been in disarray the past four or five years, and it continues. So much division on the city council, a lot of bickering on how to run the city, how to spend the funds, how to deal with unemployment, how to deal with businesses that are closing. Victor Reese is here. You want to be mayor? Yes, I do. Okay, and you're running for mayor. Adrian Villarreal, you want to be the mayor? Yes, sir. Your dad was mayor at one time in Fresno, Jose Villarreal. That's correct. 
is it fair to say that what has gone on in the city of Sanger the past four or five years is a total disgrace? Um, I wouldn't say total disgrace. There's been division, but on pretty much any family you have, you have division. The thing is, can you come together and move forward is the real issue we have to have. Disgrace or not? Not disgrace. I, I just say there's, there's, there needs to be some unification. No disgrace, but just some unification, some transparency. How do you get that? How do you reach that point where you have cooperation? I think it all falls back on leadership. Leadership has to be someone who has a vested interest in the community, who's lived in the community, and who can actually talk to both sides and unify both sides. Okay, and your vision for reconnecting uh, the politicians with the average citizen is what? Going out there and talking to people, that's what I'm doing right now, knocking on doors every single day, talking to them, find out what their issues are. Too many times you have elected officials saying, these are what the issues are without actually talking to the residents themselves. So I'm asking them themselves. Victor, you're on the council now. Correct. There was so much division on that council. Um, why? Well, it comes down to prior to this, we had division when his father was on there, but it was always respect. Um, when you had... There's no respect now? Well, there was respect in the sense where you can agree to disagree, um, but once it's done, you move forward. On the council, I believe it was last year, we just passed, well, a couple years, years ago, when we just passed the budget, the mayor, a week later, I asked, I just made a statement that we actually have fewer officers than we did before. The mayor said, liar. Call me a liar for saying that. But we had In just open passed. session, he called you a liar. We had just passed the budget, correct, and we just passed the budget the week before. And so he called me a liar for sound, telling the truth. He also called me a hypocrite for wanting to not have a, uh, another manager in there. What he brought in was a deputy police chief, which we don't need. My thing has always been more police because officers. You don't need because why? We don't need more management. We need more people on the streets. Is actually it money? Is it boils down to money? Or? It comes down to money, but it also comes down to when you call 911, you're not calling for a deputy chief or the police chief to come down. You're going to have the police officers come down. So you want more officers to be responding itself. You don't need another manager coming in. Was Joshua Mitchell the mayor of Sanger out of line in calling him a liar and a hypocrite, if that's what he did? Well, I think, you know, you have Is a, that the kind of conduct we want on the uh, city council? No, you don't. You never want that from anybody. I, I yeah. don't think it's for whether it's Joshua or anybody else. You just, you want quorum and you want respect. Mm -hmm. All right. I do want to mention to our viewers out there, Joshua Mitchell is a member of the city council. He is also the mayor. I put out several calls to him, no return phone calls. I sent him a Facebook message or two, an email or two, no response. Why is Joshua Mitchell not here debating you too? I couldn't answer that. Honestly, yeah, what's your take on it? I can't speak for Josh. I, I think for us, it's to be here to talk to you and talk to the city of Sanger and the residents, but I couldn't speak for Mr. Mitchell. Okay, let's talk about Measure L and explain it uh, a little bit in detail. Back in 2010, the Sanger City Council, with three members on the council, you had Mike Montalongo, Rosa Pena, and Martin Castellano voting three votes. The other two council members were not there. They voted on Measure L, which basically states that the city of Sanger can vote in their mayor and it redraws those district lines on how to elect council members. That is still in effect today. Do you agree with that? How, it, how the vote went down in 2010? There was a grand jury report on it now. Do you still agree with Measure L? Well, Measure L, the grand jury did look at it and the basic premise they upheld everything which said yes you can vote for the mayor. But it also said you district. have to abide by state law. It's, it was referring as far as the new maps that are going to be coming out, which we've already proved at, with the new 2010 census. Do you agree with it? The Do new you maps? like Measure L? I like, well, my thing was to help as far as putting Measure L on there to give people a choice. Do you, the residents, want to be able to vote for your mayor and your council members by district, or do you want to keep it the way it was? There were too many cities that were being sued, or school districts being sued, for having that large itself. Adrian, how does a council take a vote with two members missing on a very important issue like Measure L? It was three nothing. Well, I can't speak to that. I I, I think there was Did a they second do the right vote. thing or the wrong thing. Well, I don't agree with Measure L. I, I don't think Measure L should ever pass personally. Because because it really doesn't change that much. Because the difference is you're voting at large and you're voting within within the five city council members. But there's no really you're still a figurehead. You're still a representative of the community. I think as long as you have council members working together, you're a figurehead that represents the community at large. So that is important. But to, to actually change everything to be Measure L, to be a separate vote, I, I never agreed, agreed with it in the first place. Take a phone call. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. What's your question? Yeah, uh, more of a comment. Sounds like the city of Hangar needs to just clean house, not just on uh, the mayor's 
part, but it's the council member. This they is the coming in and story of second killers, Matthew and, and D. And stuff like that. Then there's, there's really a lot of problems up, up in that area. You follow me? Do the and then I have a small little something. comment for you, John. You guys have a great show. But I think you should start it at maybe 10 o'clock, because sometimes when <laughs> uh, it really gets interesting, is you go off the air. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you. So they have a forty-minute show, and then I, I will send you back to our regularly scheduled program. Yeah, that would well, be, that would be nice. I appreciate the comment, but you know what? I only work here. I don't run the place. But do you live in Sanger? Uh, I've lived in. I've lived all over the valley. I've worked in the fields everywhere. So I've been. I've done the oranges. I've, I've been everywhere. Is, is is it a disgrace, in your opinion, what's gone on in Sanger the last four or five years? Uh, not really a disgrace, but more like a um, uh, out of management. Like maybe somebody's been there too long, and now everybody's getting too relaxed. So now there's a lack of respect of what's going on to hold the city together. So whoever wins this mayor, uh, 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 hopefully it's not the one who's in incumbent right now because he didn't even have the uh to show up in your program. But whoever does win the office, hopefully he's stern enough to bring everybody back together. And that means even go down to the root and as Fred knows, the sanitation problem, go down to the workers and see what's going on to keep everybody happy. Get to know everybody and make a team out of it. You know, I like this guy. You know why? He's a very informed voter and he's an informed viewer. I appreciate the phone call very much. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right. Should Sanger clean house, get rid of everybody, start over? That's really up to the voters. That would include you. Sorry, Victor. <laughs> Every election is up to the voters to decide how they want to do, and that's the voters' choice as far as what they like to do. Should the city of Sanger, the residents there, vote for the mayor, or should he be appointed by the council the way it used to be? Right now we're dealing with what we have. So measure L. We're measure L. So we're <laughs> voting for the mayor as it is, and that's, that's what would exist. And if the if the city residents want to change it later, then it's going to be changed back. But I mean, right now you deal with what you have. to me that the voters should decide on everything. I don't know. What do you yeah. think, Victor? Well, when I was walking precincts the last time I had ran, first time four years ago, a lot of the voters were telling me that they had voted for the mayor. I said, no, we actually voted for the individual, not the mayor. The council votes for mayor. Yeah. A lot of them were very surprised. They were adamant they voted for the mayor. So their idea was, why don't they have a chance to vote for the mayor? It's the mayor Sanger. So that's pretty much what was on the ballot. Why can't you just reach across the aisle and shake hands with Joshua Mitchell and say, you know what, let's work together and work this out? I have no issue with that. I, I can You'd be willing to do that. I, I, we, I have no issue as far as working together, but uh, I have no issue as far as standing my ground when somebody would be calling me a liar hypocrite for telling the truth. Right. But somebody can call you a name, but you can st still have to have cooperation in, for the sake of the city and Correct. its residents. Correct. With most about 80 percent of the stuff that comes to do is routine there's no issues there right. it's just the things that there are issues we all we're five different people we should have five different opinions because we're all representing everybody out there right. so let's have but our in opinion. the end you got to have cooperation am i right correct right. okay yeah. you have to have people just discussing things with respect right okay we're talking with victor reese adrian villarreal here on connect with me about the city of sanger and some of the problems when we come back we'll talk about the unemployment rate and some of the businesses moving out and some of the past history with the grand jury reports coming out a few years ago. We're back with more, including your phone calls, 265-4331. Back in a moment. Fall for me, me TV. This fall on me TV, Remington Steel. It's definitely an emergency. Oh yeah, also emergency. Please stay with me. And more familiar faces. You act like I've never been on television before. Me TV continues to deliver the shows you remember. I remember. And you may discover shows you've never seen before. Is that a threat? Fall for me, me TV. <laughs> for a complete schedule, go to metvnetwork.com. All right, we're back with more. We got a phone call here on Connect With Me. Good morning. Oops, I guess he got tired of waiting. Anyway, we're talking with Victor Reese and Adrian Villarreal. Let me start with you, Adrian. Uh, the unemployment rate has been kind of battered around in the city of Sanger. Is it 16%? Is it 18%? Is it 22%? We know a lot of people are out of work. What are the best guess estimates as to what it really is. I'm hearing 22, I'm hearing 25. I've heard different numbers. But for me, the numbers really don't matter. The, the, what matters most is you have a leadership in place that's going to solicit more businesses to come, keep their mouths quiet when it comes. How do you solicit more business when the council is bickering? 
It's a divided council. It makes it difficult when you have your local newspaper uh, airing this dirty laundry that we have and you have a council that's bickering the way it does. I think you need to have, like I said, a unification of leadership and people who are reaching out to these businesses in a, in a diligent manner and in a, in a sales type of manner where you're bringing on these new businesses but in a quiet fashion that, that's going to bring more jobs to Sanger. All right. Good morning. You're on Connect With Me. What's your question? Quickly. Yeah, Hello? The question is, it's not, not about bickering, it's about corruption uh, in the government of the city of Sanger. It's about corruption, is that what you're saying? Yes. Look at the payoff that the bad city manager took off, $80,000. Look at, uh, look at all the high salaries they were offered, $150,000 for a uh, recreation director. Come on. Yeah, you're talking about years past. We'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, what's yeah. your reaction to that, Victor? Yeah, there was quite a few people that were making minimum 121000 When I got in there, um, his, his father got in there. What we did is we ended up cutting some of the positions because it was just way too much that for people to be making with almost no staff at all. We'll get into that in a moment. Let's get back to the unemployment rate just for a second. Is it 22 percent, 25 percent? Well, it's an agricultural community. So if you look at the last, say, 21 months since the mayor's been there, on average it's 25.2 percent unemployment. 21 months before he was there, it's 24.9 percent. How do you close changed. the gap well, if you have a council that's yeah. divided and bickering? Well, what you need to do is focus on the industrial jobs itself. The mayor has been focusing on pretty much any job, which is fine. Any job is better than no job at all. But when you try to focus on bringing in a 99-cent store next to a dollar store, mi minimum wage jobs, part-time jobs, not to cut it. Get people off of the poverty level. We have about 32 percent of our people underneath the poverty level. You had Save Mart Supermarket close shop there. Correct. You had Austin's, a very popular restaurant that was there, what, 20 years? They Correct. closed shop. Other businesses have gone by the wayside. You have an empty lot there that's owned by Rick Bubinick at mm -hmm. 7th and Academy, I believe. Uh, fresh and easy may or may not move in there. Sanger is not in a good position right now. Well, Austin's been replaced with Ranch House. Now, Ranch House has just recently been open, I think, for about three or four months. You have, uh, I don't know the owner, but I know Deanna uh, Gonzalez, Tufts Gonzalez is the manager there. So that place did reopen. As far as businesses coming in, there is a process to everything going on. And, and you know, what we need to do is go out and solicit these businesses correctly. Work with guys like Rick Bubinick and say, hey, Rick, we're here to help. We're here to work How with you. How did Sanger lose so many businesses and why? It comes down to the lack of income itself. Again, businesses, a lot of people thought if you bring houses into a neighborhood or city, you'll get more businesses. But that's not the reality. If the people are just making ends meet, they don't have the discretionary income for a business to come in. If they come in, you're going to have an empty building like Save Mart, or the rest of them are there. So you still need to focus on the industrial jobs, the good paying jobs that can do more than just make ends meet, have a little discretionary income. Do that, the business will know that, and they'll come in. If you don't do that, you get 99 cent stores, dollar stores, those kind of jobs. I think businesses need to have a good working relationship with the city of Sanger. I think that's a key component, and I think we've, we've lacked on that recently. And how do you do that? When a city council, I go back to the original question, when a council can't agree on any issue, uh, there's so much division there, uh, how, do you, how do you accomplish anything? Well, again, it, as he mentions, you have to have a good relationship with the businesses itself. What I would do as mayor... But if, a business, if I'm a business owner and I come in and I yeah. see so much bickering on the council that they can't agree on this, that, or the other thing, I'm, I may take my business to Reedley or Parlier right. or somewhere else. That, I believe that's one of the reasons we're both actually running for office. Both of us coming in as mayor, either one of us, would work with the other council members itself, try to bring more harmony to the council itself. Once you do that, I would create a in a sense, a mayor's advisory team, which would work with local businesses, industrial, schools, everybody, bring them in. How can we work together move forward rather than just looking backwards? All right. I'm talking about division, and I've mentioned that uh, bickering on the council uh, many times. Let me be specific. Victor Reese, you're here. You side most of the time with Martin Castellano on the council. Uh, Rodney Nielsen, for the most part, is kind of a swing vote. Uh, I don't want to, you know, etch that in stone, but uh, Eli Ontiveros and Joshua Mitchell are on the other side of the fence. So you have two and two pitted against each other, and you got Rodney Nielsen in the middle. Is he going to go on this side of the fence or that side of the fence? Is that pretty much how it is in Sanger, for the most part? On a lot of the very important ones, again, it comes down to you have different opinions, and it comes down to who's looking at it, what are the issue itself, and are they really researching the issue itself? Or but on the important issues, it's you and Castellano versus Eli Antaveros and Joshua Mitchell, right? With Nielsen kind of caught on the fence. Yeah, and Nielsen, what he does, uh, having been an analyst, or he's an analyst, and I, I was an analyst before, we look at the issues more from uh, a logical perspective. 
So what Nielsen does also is he looks at it from a large perspective. Is this good? Will this work or not? And well, that's what really it is, someone to look at it that way. If you're elected, Adrian, how can you change that? That culture, that mindset on the council? It goes to leadership. It goes to, to leave your ego at the door mm -hmm. and to lead by example and to be someone who unifies people and individuals. You can be on one side, we can be on the other, but we need to be respectful to each other and unify each other's community. We, I've been here since I was five years old in the city of Sanger, and we, we, we have a vested interest. We grew up with each other. We have to have this feeling of we're doing what's right for Sanger, not what's right for our own political It's good rhetoric. Conditions. It's good talk. But if you get in, if you get in, how will the culture change and the mindset? Again, uh, coming back to respect. Uh, when I was in the planning commission, I was a chairman, and I liked the fact that we had uh, difference of opinions. But in the end, we all focus on going forward. Uh, for me, it's about, again, respect. Well, everyone else, I'm fine with everyone else having different opinions as long as we can come to an agreement, whether it's three, four, or five members. Let's just move forward. Decisions made. Now let's move forward as a council. Not look back. Move forward. All right. You're two stand-up guys for being here. Victor Reese, Adrian Villarreal. We're going to continue our conversation here, 265-4331. We're talking about all the problems and the situation in the city of Sanger. We're back in just a moment. Stay tuned. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified, ready, steam equipped, high efficiency Frigidaire Affinity Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Frigidaire laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. All right, we're back here on Connect With Me with uh, Victor Reese, Adrian Villarreal, both running for mayor. Joshua Mitchell is also running for mayor. He's the current mayor, but he decided not to show up for the program. I have no idea why. I tried to reach out to him many, many times. Let me go over some past dirty laundry and history with the city of Sanger. Back in 2009, grand jury report was issued. It said the following, very critical of the way Sanger was being governed. It says that uh, the management by city officials has put the city in serious financial crisis a bind it says jim drinkhouse was the city manager at the time right correct and uh the dbcp fund had about 11 12 million dollars into it when drinkhouse came into power montalongo i believe was the mayor it was the water filtration system money 11 or 12 million it disappeared it totally disappeared drinkhouse was hired by a council he had a criminal background report he had a gambling habit and the salaries were through the roof, $150,000 salary for the Parks and Rec Director, a police chief who was well over 100000 making more than the police chief here in Fresno. Wasn't that corruption? I know there was no criminal finding by the grand jury, but it just rings in people's head. Something corrupt is going on at City Hall. Where did that money go? Well, I came in City Council shortly after this, uh, just before this grand jury, I came in in 2008. So I was there a couple months before the grand jury came out. Grand uh, jury came out in 2009, correct. I believe. Yeah, and I was sworn in December 2008. Um, city managers gone, finance directors gone. The money that was used, a lot of it was put into programs that were not water-related itself. Several times it came up to the council when I was on the council for non-water-related issues. Every time I voted against it, I said, that's not the intent of it, so let's not use it for that. Uh, unfortunately. Some of the money was used for non-water-related issues, and that's where it ended up going. But these two grand jury reports, doesn't that hang over the city of Sanger like a black cloud? It just won't go away. It definitely it, does. It's, what is, you have to attribute it to, to reckless behavior and, and, and corruption, if you want to call it that. And, and basically, they're not going through processes like we should. We have city council members and prior mayors and leadership that, that we have to follow a process to, to vet these people properly, to find out who we're hiring and know their backgrounds and know that they're actually here for to help the city to be city administrators and not politicians. I mean, the grand jury report uh, said that one council member tried to persuade the police department to drop criminal charges against a family member. Uh, uh, also that uh, council members routinely met with developers for lunch before key votes on developers' projects. Mm -hmm. How could something like that happen out in the open? Reckless behavior, not following the rules. 
when we when we become candidates, we have a set of rules that we follow, and it's up to us to be honest and and follow these rules. And if you're not going to follow the rules, then actually it's going to ca catch up to you. Two council members asked the police chief or told the police chief, "You're writing too many tickets in the city." <laughs> I mean, this is almost laughable. Right. Is it not? I think it is. You have to let the police chief do their jobs, and police do their jobs. It's right. Correct. And so, how does Sanger overcome this black cloud? that's hanging over. How do you blow that black cloud into the Pacific Ocean somewhere and get rid of it? Just need to move forward. Uh, yes, you have things that happened in the past and you have to learn from that. Those mistakes were there. Um, you continue to make those mistakes, you're never going to get past it itself. So it's no other mistakes made in previous councils. Let's learn from that and move forward itself. Can you assure the public, the city of Sanger, that if you're elected, if you're elected, the corruption is gone? It will never come back. It will never return. Go ahead. Yes. When I first got on the council, uh, I remember talking to the, the director there that was in charge of uh, dealing with the developers. I said, I just want to let you know, I do not want to meet with any developers. That's your job to do. Bring it to the council, and then we'll deal with it there. And as far as uh, trying to direct the, count, the, the staff itself, that's the city manager's job. The city council hires and fires the city manager or the city attorney. So for us, let them do their job. We be the policymakers let them do their jobs. Okay, I'm going to give you a minute each, like almost like a final statement, what okay. you'd like to say to the people of Sanger. Go ahead. Well, basically, I, I'd like to say that I was, I was called to serve, and that's why I'm running for mayor. I was called to serve our community. I, I, I have a set of values that was instilled in me uh, by, by our God and by my family, my friends, and, and by, by Sanger, the city of Sanger, and, and its people. I have a passion and love for this community, and I think with that passion and love, you you try to move the city forward without without an ego without any personal interest at hand you leave that at the door and you go into these meetings and you go into the city hall and say i'm doing this because i want to do what's best for the city of sanger not what's best for me not what's best for this other person i want to do what's best for the community and the city our kids we have to do keep our kids in mind and do what's best for them all right victor you're up grew up in sanger my entire life um, for me it's about making the city go a better place itself i've got three kids what I want to do is have them have a city that's as nice as it was when I was growing up itself. Uh, when I got on the council, some of the things I talked about was uh, having a new gang unit, having a gang unit. I helped get a gang unit going. Um, getting the Boys and Girls Club, they're there now. We actually have two sites there, which we have about 400 kids doing great. Working on the streets, the residential streets. So I'll bring in an urgent care center, which is on the way. So for me, I've been there to say this is what I want to do and this is what I've accomplished, but yet there is still more to accomplish. And I don't want us to go backwards, I want us to go forward. All right. Let me ask you, if Joshua Mitchell, who did not want to appear on this program, is reelected as the mayor of Sanger, what will the future of Sanger hold, in your opinion? A lot of privatization. He's already tried, or well, he has succeeded in privatizing our trash service, which is not the best thing to do. It sounds good on paper. It sounds good rhetoric. But when you look at the actual facts itself, it's not very good. You try to privatize because the money itself. Um, when you try to privatize it, I talked to some business owners that are here in Fresno. They thought it was a great idea, and now they're really complaining about it itself. It's been as far as commercial. Um, he tried privatizing the ambulance service and the fire department. Again, not good for the community itself. Adrian? I think if he's reelected, it's going to continue to separate our community, unfortunately. But that's just the environment that he's created. Um, if, if you're with him, you're with him. If you're not, then you're not. And that's, that's, un that's unfortunate. What kind of a role does the local newspaper play there in politics? Well, Negative or positive? Well, I think I think this this the role is is they're they're trying to, instead of reporting the news they're trying to make the news that's that's unfortunate we need to have a more positive spin to help our community out. You, I would agree as far as what he said. Um, need to have a, a newspaper, media, whatever it is that's uh, fair on both sides of the aisle. Good luck to both of you. Thank Victor you, Victor Reese. Pleasure. Pleasure seeing you today, Adrian. Thank you, John. Good to see you, and good luck to both of you. Hope the things work out in the city of Sanger. No matter which way it goes, we don't play favorites here. We're back with uh, more of Connect With Me tomorrow. Our thoughts and prayers with those people on the East Coast. See you tomorrow.
here goes. Some shows force you to laugh. <laughs> but with Mary Tyler Moore, laughter comes easily. <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore, more laughs and more more. The more the merrier. It'll tickle your funny bone. <laughs> Would you like to borrow a feather? Weeknights at 9, 8 central on MeTV.